Love it or hate it, if you work in an office, Microsoft Outlook is a part of your life. And learning how to be productive with Outlook is crucial to saving time. Now, you may think you already know how to use Outlook, but there are ways to use it to increase your productivity that you may not be aware of. So the goal of this video is to present Outlook in a different light and to show you some tips along with introduce a productivity system that you can implement. Now, before we get into things, in this video, we'll be using the classic Outlook, mainly because Microsoft is currently rolling out a new version of Outlook. And well, let's just say the new version has not been met with the most welcoming of receptions. Although, if you're a fan of the new Outlook, later on in this video, we'll jump into the new version and show you where you can find the counterparts of the main topics that this video covers. All right, let's get into it. Let's start with something simple, and that's how to quickly jump between your inbox and calendar, since it's not uncommon to jump between the two during your typical workday. And frankly, it can become rather aggravating to constantly grab the mouse to jump back and forth between the two. A better solution is to use the keyboard shortcut Control-1 and Control-2. Control-2 will take you to your calendar. Control-1 will take you to the inbox. Let's move on and talk about a subject that you think you may know very well, and that's using Outlook categories. But let's see if we can give you a different perspective and show you how to build an email management system that uses categories as its foundation. Now, most people often use categories to create generic labels and then assign the label to an email. For example, you might categorize an email as being from a vendor, a client, a particular project, internal team, etc. But in our case, let's start to build our system by using categories in a different way. Here's how it works. First, let's talk about email in general. If you think about it, you can break email into three basic types. The first being an email that you and you alone are responsible for. The second type are the ones you might need to work collaboratively or require involvement from other people. The third is a more generic catch-all type. For example, policy emails, FYI emails, newsletters, memos, etc. So bearing that in mind, we can now take those three types of emails and create categories to use in our system. To create our categories, from the Home tab, click Categorize, All Categories, and from here, it's just a matter of choosing the color we want to use and assigning the label. So how about we start with this red category and rename it to Critical, and as a side note, you can assign a keyboard shortcut to a particular category, and that will speed up your work even more. Next, how about we pick this yellow category and let's rename it to Collaborative or Colab for short. And last, how about we pick this green category and rename it to something simple like FYI. Okay, now that we have our categories created, let's move on and look at how we can use them. To begin, let's go back to the inbox. And as a side note, here's a pro tip for you. Whenever you start your workday, try to develop the habit of reading your emails from bottom up. The idea is that if you begin at the bottom and work your way to the top, there's less risk you'll miss or accidentally skip an email. Okay, so getting back on point, to use our categories, you want to hover over an email, right click and look for categorize and assign the category the email falls into. For example, we can make the case that this looks important and let's label it as such. From there, it's just a matter of working through our emails and repeating the process and assigning the appropriate category to the appropriate email. The next step in building our system is to integrate search folders with our categories. In simple terms, think of a search folder as a stored or preserved search that you can go back to at any time. For example, let's say you want to find an email from a particular client. You can set up a search folder that when you click it, you'll see all the emails from that client, which eliminates you from constantly having to use the search bar. Frankly, search folders are very underutilized, so it would be in your best interest to explore them later. Yet for today, we're going to build a search folder that will show you all the emails that fall into a particular category. To create a search folder, right click and choose new search folder. In the dialog box, scroll down and look for categorized mail, then click choose. In the list of categories, check the box for the top level. In this case, it's the critical category. Click OK, click OK again. Now, if we go over here on the left and click on the search folder, we'll see just the emails that have been assigned to that category. 
So the next step is to create a search folder for all the remaining categories. So we'll right click and create one for the second tier category and then do a rinse and repeat for the third tier category. All right, so now if we click on the search folders, you can see that Outlook is showing us the appropriate emails for each appropriate category. Pretty cool. The next step in our system is to place the search folders up here into this favorite section. The idea being we can get to them and work through them quickly. To add them to favorites, you can either right click and choose add to favorites, or you can click and drag them up to the top. The choice is yours. Once that's complete, we can then rearrange the items by doing a click and drag to put them in the order that we want. Okay, so the final step in this email system is to add a level of automation. And to do that, we can use something called a rule. Think of a rule as being a programmed action. In our case, we're going to create a rule that when an email is received from a specific sender, it will automatically get categorized. For example, if we get an email from the boss, we know it will always be important. So we'll want to label it as such. To create the rule, right click on an email, then look for rules, create new rule. In the window that appears, choose advanced. Then at the top, check the boxes with the sender's name, then click next. The second step is where you tell Outlook what specific action to take. So we'll tell Outlook to assign the emails from the boss to this particular category. Once we do that, you'll want to drift down here and click on the word category, then choose the specific category. Click next. And here you can determine if there are any exceptions, which will most likely not be the case. And finally, you can give the rule a name and run it if you choose. Okay, so the next step will be to create more rules for the other categories. So in our case, we'd want to create a rule for the second tier categories and then another one for the third. So we'll go ahead and do that and just speed the process up. So now moving forward, whenever you open up Outlook, the rules will run in the background and it will assign the category automatically. And all you have to do is go to your favorite section and work through the critical folder first then through the second tier folder, and then the third, bearing in mind that you work your way up through the emails you've received. All right, and there it is, your automated email system. Now, granted, no system is perfect, yet hopefully you can get some practical use out of it, or better yet, create your own system. Okay, let's move on and talk about quick parts and templates, starting with quick parts. Let's say you find yourself typing the same email over and over again or perhaps you do a lot of repetitive copying and pasting with your emails. Quick Parts alleviates you from having to do all that work or put another way, Quick Parts can be used to bypass having to type the same email over and over again. The way Quick Parts works is you first select the text you want to reuse, then click on Insert, Quick Parts, Save Selection to Quick Part Gallery, or Alternatively, you can press Alt F3, the choice is yours. From there, give your quick part a name. Next, to use the quick part, you have a couple choices. You can either type the name you gave it and then press F3 and the whole text will be added. Or you can choose insert, quick parts, hover over the one you want to insert, click it, and there you go. If you ever want to delete a quick part in the quick part menu, hover over the one you want to get rid of, Right click and choose organize and delete. Moving on, let's talk about templates. You can make the case that templates and quick parts are very similar. So it's really just a matter of preference. Although on a technical level, quick parts are generally used for snippets of text. Templates are generally more long form, yet you can make your own determination. To create a template, starting from a new message, from the message tab, click view templates. Then over here on the right, Click this plus sign. From here, it's just a matter of naming your template and adding the content you want to use. Click save. To use the template, click on view templates, hover over the one you want to use, click it, and it'll be inserted. Moving on, let's talk about another feature that is not widely used, and that's something called conversation view. Conversation view will group and show you all the emails that have the same subject. And that saves you time from having to look for all the emails in the chain. To get the conversation view, click on view, shows conversations, 
and then choose where you want to apply it. Next, you want to click on the triangle to expand out the email chain and then click on the emails to read them in a nice compact display. To turn off the conversation view, just uncheck the box. Let's change gears a bit and talk about how to use tasks and how a task will connect to a very underrated app called To Do. So as many of you know, a task is something you want to keep track of until it's complete. And as you may know, you can create a new task by clicking on task, new task, and then filling in the blanks. Now, what you may not know is that if you get an email that needs to be converted into a task or designated as a task, you can click and drag that email directly over the task section. And when you let go, the email will be converted into a task and then you can modify the text if needed before you save everything and it's now been added to your task list. But wait, there's more. What most people don't realize is that when you add a task into this task section, it will automatically connect and create a task in this to-do app. This to-do app is very underrated and I strongly recommend you learning more about it just in case you're not that familiar with it because it really is a good task management app. Moving on, let's build on this use of tasks to create a workflow between Outlook and OneNote. So if you're the kind of person that likes to use note-taking apps like OneNote, you can connect tasks from OneNote into Outlook. For example, let's say you're over here in OneNote and you've created this to-do list. You can select just one item from the to-do list or you can select several of them. In our case, let's go ahead and select a bunch of them. Then from the Home tab, select Outlook Task and then just go with the option that best meets your circumstances. For today, how about we go with no date? Why? Why not? Once we make that selection, if we go back into Outlook, you can see the items from our OneNote have been added into the Outlook tasks. And the bonus is the task from OneNote is also showing in the To Do app. So, put another way, Outlook, To Do, and OneNote are all synced together. And that's pretty cool. Likewise, we also have the option of sending Outlook items into OneNote. For example, we can take this email and from the Home tab, we can click on the Send to OneNote button, which will open all our notebooks. From there, we can just choose the notebook section and page we want to send the email to. And this works all across the board in Outlook. We can send items, tasks, contacts, all into OneNote. Moving on. The next topic we'll discuss is delayed sending because you'd be surprised how often you catch a mistake after you send an email. In Outlook, you can delay sending in two ways. The first is to click on the options and then look for delay delivery. And from there, you can set the specific time you want the email to be sent out. Or if you want to delay the delivery of all your outgoing messages, you'll need to create a rule. To create the rule, click on file, manage rules and alerts, new rule. Then apply on messages I send, click next, then click next again, because we're going to apply this rule to all the emails. Then click on delay all messages. From there, we can set the delay time for whatever suits our needs. And then you can finish things off by setting some exceptions and giving the rule a name. Now, when you send an email, it will be delayed for however long you've determined. Okay, so for the folks who are using the new version of Outlook, let's take a quick peek at the main topics covered in this video and show you where to find the counterparts in a new version. We spent a good amount of time talking about categories. So in a new version, you can find the categories by looking for this tag. If you want to rename the categories, you can go under Manage Categories and then rename them in this window, along with adding them to the favorite section directly, which is kind of cool. To use templates, in this version, it's actually an add-in. To get to the templates, first create a new email, then under the Insert tab, click the Apps icon. From there, you'll need to enable the template app. If you want to view an email by conversation, click on an email, then select View, and then Expand Conversation. For all the OneNote people in the audience, if you want to send an email into OneNote, it's an app you'll need to enable as well. So while you're reading an email, look for this apps icon. And if you click it, you'll see the OneNote app. If you select it, you can connect to one of your notebooks and then send the item to certain sections or pages, just like you did in the old version of Outlook. And last, if you want to create some rules, 
In the far upper right corner, you'll need to click on this gear icon to open your settings. Then on the left side, click Mail. In the middle, choose Rules, then Add New Rule. Now before you go, if you want to learn some more Outlook tips, you can check out this video right here. All right, and that'll do it for this one. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as usual, don't be shy about clicking on that like and share button. And we will see you next time.